Hey guys, good morning. Um, we are continuing our journey through Romans chapter 8, discussing church words and big phrases. Um, and we're going to be dissecting these for several weeks. Today, we are tackling a big topic. We are tackling the spirit versus the flesh. Um, so we'll be addressing this topic for two weeks, actually. I'm going to give you kind of like a foundational introduction this week. And then next week, we're going to flow into how do we respond to this? Um, what are kind of the warnings and the instructions about um, living according to the flesh? And then what are the promises and what is the security in living by the spirit? How do we respond to that? So this day, I mean this day, today, um, I'm not going to pretend to cover all that comes with this concept of living in the spirit versus living by the flesh. Um, we could spend an entire lifetime addressing this topic and we would still be uncovering and discovering new things. So today we're just gonna look at a few passages of scripture um, that give us a foundational understanding of what it means to live by the flesh and what it means to walk by, be led by, and live by the spirit. So let's go ahead and pray and then we're gonna dive right in. Oh, Father in heaven, I am just so thankful for your love and your mercy that is new each day. I thank you for this time right now where we get to just look in the scriptures and see what you have for us here. I pray, Lord God, that you would help us to understand this big concept in a simple way so that we can forsake the flesh and the desires of our sinful nature and live by the spirit, live in a way that pleases you and honors you. I pray, God, for your help um, as I try to explain this, and I pray for your help in all of us trying to understand and live this out. We need you, God. We depend on you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we do declare um, just our trust and dependence. Um, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So we are in Romans chapter 8. Today we're going to be covering verses 3 through 11. So let me go ahead and read that passage, and then we'll dive into some explanation. Romans 8, 3. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And in the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Whoa, that is some cool stuff right there. Um, and we see this big contrast between the flesh and the spirit. And today we're gonna look at a couple other passages of scripture that kind of go through the traits of each of those. So let's just tackle this big topic and make it simple, okay? To live according to the flesh is to live according to our sinful nature. It's selfish, it's ugly, it's ungodly. Our sin nature gives in to things of the world. The world has fallen and we are sinful. It is not a life that submits to the authority and the lordship of God. To live by the flesh is to center our lives around ourselves. Okay, so that's in short. What is living by the flesh? It's living according to our sin nature. It's hostile to God and it's centered around the self. But to live by the Spirit, on the other hand, um, aka the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God, is to live fully surrendered to the control, 
guidance and help of the Spirit of God. Those who live by the Spirit submit to and obey the authority of God and the authority of God's word. To live by the Spirit is to center one's life around God. So if you live by the flesh, you live to yourself. And if you live by the Spirit, you live to God. You live to honor him, you seek his word, you obey his word. It's surrendered to God. So it's simple, right? <laughs> That's pretty clear. But it looks simple on paper, but to compare and contrast just a few passages of scripture on this topic, I think you may see how impossible it is for us to obtain holiness or to go after God or to seek God in his word. You may see that it's impos how impossible it would be for us to exchange a life according to the flesh for a life according to the spirit. So without the help of God, without the work of Christ, on our behalf, it would be impossible. We need God to live like God. So now we're gonna look at a few passages of scripture that kind of compare and contrast what it means to live by the flesh, what are the characteristics of living by your sinful nature, and then what are the characteristics of living by the spirit? So the first few sets of passages that I'm gonna read are about the flesh. And then the second half are going to be about the spirit. Okay, so first we're going to go to the book of Galatians. We're in chapter five, two verses here, verses, or three verses here, excuse me, um, verses 19 through 21. It says, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy drunkenness and orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it seems pretty obvious, right? These are bad things, ugly traits. Um, they cause division, they disrupt, they separate, they hurt. Second passage we're gonna look at is Ephesians. We're gonna be in the second chapter, verses one through three. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. So what do we see in this passage? We see that we were dead, we were dead to our transgressions and sins. We couldn't notice them. We were enslaved to them. We were um, kind of deceived by them, okay? We were disobedient. We were gratifying the cravings of the flesh. So whatever we wanted, we went after it. Instead of seeking what God wanted, we did what we wanted to do instead. We followed its desires and its thoughts. And then here's the kicker. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. God is holy and he's just, but he has anger towards evil. And because he's just, he has to punish that evil. We were deserving of God's wrath. Let's look at another passage. Colossians 3, verses 5 through 10. This is the last one we'll read about the flesh here, so stick with me. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of its creator. So there's a lot of warnings there. There's a lot of descriptors there. These passages explain to us why it's so hard for us to live according to the spirit, because we were so deceived and in bondage to slave. Uh, sorry, we were enslaved to the bondage of sin. But let's look at a few more passages from those exact same chapters, but it's now going to contrast that with what it's like to live by the Spirit. So let's go back to Galatians, same chapter, chapter 5, and now we're going to read verses 13 through 18 and 22 through 26. Verse 13, 
You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. So a quality of living by the Spirit is love and service. For the entire law is filled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you, you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And then you guys have probably heard this, right? The fruit of the Spirit. Um, these are qualities or traits of a person whose life is surrendered to God and the spirit of God um, now is, is in them, is living through them. And these are the traits that come out. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So that's a big contrast to the sin that we were just reading about in those last passages, right? This isn't anger or malice or lust or deceit. This is love. This is self-control, this is peace, this is gentleness. All these beautiful characteristics that can only be given to us by the Spirit of God. Okay, next, Ephesians. We're going back to Ephesians here. Chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. This is, this is probably one of my favorite um, passages here. Okay, verses 4 through 10. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You wanna know what I love about this passage? It reminds me that in order for me to live by the Spirit it has nothing to do with Sierra and everything to do with God. It is a gift. Your salvation is a gift. The Holy Spirit living in you is a gift. You can live by the Spirit of God because you've been given this gift from God. And the last passage here, the last three verses, Colossians 3, verses 12 through 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So those passages that we just read remind us that because of Christ and the Spirit of God, we do not have to submit to the slavery of sin. You see, sin is ugly. It destroys and it separates and it hurts. Our earthly nature, our flesh, is naturally against the holiness of God. The Bible tells us that no one is righteous, not even one of us. It even tells us that all have sinned and all will continue to sin. All will fall short of God's glory. But the passages we just read describe the, ugly, the ugliest traits about us. Without the help of God, we would still be controlled by those things. We would still be deceived by that sin. We desperately need God. We need Jesus to intercede, and we need the help of the Holy Spirit. That is why I'm so encouraged that Christ works on our behalf. Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. 
That is walking by the Spirit, Christ in you, the Holy Spirit in you, surrendering and submitting to the authority of God in your life. Let's pray. Father, we just declare that we are in Christ. We declare that the Spirit is in us. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in us. What a gift we have been given. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would help us and guide us and lead us. Help us to make a daily choice to forsake the flesh and to live by the Spirit through our faith in Christ. God, we trust you. We depend on you. We say thank you for the work of Jesus and thank you for the help of the Holy Spirit, God. Continue to change us to be more like you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. See you guys next week.